Good afternoon, judges. Today, uh, my name is Ethan Johnny So with my teammate Kai Kai Hin Cheng, and we are team 2340158 from Harrow. Today, we'll be presenting our paper on the properties of the semigroup generated by the RL fractional integral. Firstly, let us briefly go through the outline of our research. In our paper, we seek to combine three uh, concepts, namely the fractional integral, bokton lebesgue space, and semigroups to form an operator phi, which we use to denote the semigroup generated by the riemann leopold fractional integral. This leads us to our main results, of which we can then decompose into three parts. Namely, the, um, firstly, we determine the, an ex explicit expression for the resolvent of the fractional integral operator. Secondly, we determine that phi is a semigroup of the following type. Oh. Uh, uh, lastly, we show that phi is well-behaved. In the interest of time, we will now very briefly skim through the basic concepts of the fractional integral, bokner lebesgue space, and semigroups. The fractional integral is an extension to the ordinary integrals to a non-integral order alpha. In our paper, we use the riemann leopold <laughs> fractional integral, which is defined as follows. Uh, we denote the fractional integral operator using J alpha. Seizure <clears throat> semigroups, also known as strongly continuous semigroups, or just semigroups in general, are uh, mappings from the positive reals to the set of bounded operators that map from an arbitrary Banach space X to itself. And they satisfy the uh, following conditions. Now, given a semigroup T, we can define an operator A by the following. And we call A the infinitesimal generator of T. As mentioned before in our paper, we consider the semigroups generated by J alpha. We now move on to some preliminary results. Firstly, the Bochner integral is an extension of the Lebesgue integral to functions mapping from a Lebesgue measurable subspace of Rn to an arbitrary Banach space X. The LP Bochner Lebesgue space is the space of all Bochner measurable functions f such that the norm of f on X is in the, Lebesgue L the LP Lebesgue space. The norm of a function in LP Bochner Lebesgue space is defined as the following, and this induces an operator norm on linear operators. Notably, we have the following result by Carvalho, Nito, and Junior where it states an upper bound for the operator norm of J alpha. Now, given a C0 semigroup T, we have that there exists constants M and omega such that the following inequality holds, and in which case T is then said to be a semigroup of type M omega. We now introduce further classifications of semigroups. A uniformly continuous semigroup is a C0 semigroup that converges towards the identity operator uh, in the norm sense, as described by the limit below. And we have theorem one, which states that a uniformly continuous semigroup can be expressed in terms of its uh, infinitesimal generator, A, um, in the following way. And note that A is bounded over its domain. Now, by extending the notion of semigroups to the complex plane, we produce analytic semigroups, which are defined to be operators mapping from a certain set defined below uh, to, a, to the set of bounded operators. An analytic semigroup of, is of angle theta if it satisfies certain analytic properties in this set. Now, suppose that A is a closed operator, then the spectrum of A is defined to be the set of all lambda, such that the uh, mapping lambda i minus A is not bijective. We then have that the spectral radius of A is defined to be the largest lambda in uh, the spectrum of A. This can be calculated using Jofan's formula as follows, and furthermore, for all lambda which is not in the spectrum of A, we have that the resolvent of A at point lambda is defined as the inverse of lambda i minus A. We also note the two following theorems, namely the Newman series and the hiller yosida theorem. The reason for the topic of our paper is that firstly, J alpha is well known to be a bounded linear operator. And so by theorem one, it is then natural to set the uh, J alpha as the infinitesimal generator of a certain uniformly continuous semigroup. Hence, questions about the properties of this generated semigroup, which we denote as phi, inherently follows. We now move on to our main results and derivations. <clears throat> uh, our first result is that we, explicit, we determine an explicit expression for the resolvent of J alpha. Uh, we do this by firstly using Jill Fan's formula and Sterling's approximation to determine that the spectral radius of J alpha is equal to zero. And this allows us to safely proceed to the next step, which is to apply the Newman series expansion, Leibniz integral rule, and Fubini's theorem to find that the resolvent operator of J alpha, when applied to a function f of x, results in this expansion, whereby we then uh, denote an operator uh, a such that a of f of x is equal to this expression here. Uh, 
<clears throat> our next result is regarding the boundedness of phi and states that phi is a strongly continuous semigroup of the following type. Uh, we obtain this result by using the Hele Yosida theorem to show that phi is of type 1 omega if and only if the operator norm of A, as defined before, is uh, bounded above by the, uh, this geometric sum. Then, by using the Holder and Minkowski inequalities, we can show that the <coughs> uh, operator norm of A is less than or equal to this expression, which we then uh, expand to equate it to this sum. Lastly, we show that this inequality holds, allowing us to then infer that phi is of this type. <coughs> Our next results are regarding the well-behavedness of phi. <coughs> Our uh, result two states that uh, all semigroups, which can be expressed in the following way, uh, whereby, a, whereby S is a bounded operator, are analytic with angle theta equals to pi over two. In particular, we have that phi of alpha kz is analytic with respect to z, for k being a complex number. The proof of this is omitted in the interest of time. However, note that we now consider a complex z instead of a real t. Our next result states that phi is locally Lipschitz continuous on this interval uh, with respect to alpha. And we can obtain this result by using the series definition of phi to expand this expression, which we then rearrange. Then via Fubini's theorem and the triangle inequality, we find that this expression is bounded below by this seemingly complex summation. However, we can then use the substitution w equals to x minus s to notice that the part inside the absolute value is actually a secant of the following function. And so by the mean value theorem, we can then rewrite the part inside the absolute value as the following. <clears throat> we can then split the integral into two parts and integrate them for a large enough n, and sh then show that the ratio between the terms decreases to zero as n approaches infinity. Thus, we have the uh, desired result. Our next result states that phi is strongly continuous with respect to alpha. And this follows because we already know that uh, phi is strongly continuous with respect to alpha for alpha being greater than zero. <clears throat> and this is because of result three. Hence, it suffices to show that this limit is true for all functions. And we can show this by using the fact that J alpha is known to be strongly continuous, meaning that the following inequality holds. And <clears throat> then we can uh, use the series definition once again to expand this uh, expression and rearrange it. Then by using the triangle inequality, we can then uh, make an upper bound for this expression. Lastly, we can then split the resulting sum into two parts and bound each sum. Our last result states that this inequality holds. Um, this result actually follows from results three and four and is thereby omitted. We now move on to the significance of our results. Firstly, it is clear that integer order integration is better behaved than fractional order integration. Hence, we could approximate uh, phi of alpha z as phi of n z, whereby n is the closest integer to alpha. We can then use our results on the well-behavedness of phi to determine the error between these two operators. We can then use the Fourier series of f in the L2 bonkner lebesgue space um, to see that to straightforward to, to see that it's straightforward to apply the approximated uh, semigroup to f. Next, another application of our results is that we can use a, the Cauchy integral formula, which extends to operators as well, uh, to compute f of j alpha, and this could be easier than perhaps a direct computation of f of j alpha since we have already uh, derived an explicit expression for the resolvent of J alpha. Lastly, we can also use our results to guarantee the well-behavedness of certain PDEs. For example, in the following PDE, we can show that the solution is theta holder continuous on this interval, given that the fractional integral of F is also theta holder continuous. And that's it. Thank you for attending.